It might not get anybody on at this time anyway. Might be too late. Everybody might be in bed. <coughs> good evening. Good evening. Good morning. Good afternoon. Uh, depending where you are in this big, beautiful world of ours. Who's joined? Who's joined at funny o'clock at night? <coughs> Still got the cough. Cook off. Good evening, good evening, everybody join in. Hey, Kella, hey, Jackie. Hope you're all well. Hey, Diane. Thank you for joining this late. Hey, John P. Hey, Joe. I hope you're all well this evening. Evening, Samantha. Well, we had to be late because we've been watching. Well, I've been watching. I'm a celeb. <laughs> hey, Antoinette. Chest sounds bad, Lindsay. It's not as bad as what it was, Antoinette. Nowhere near as bad as what it was. Um, so, uh, yeah, feeling, feeling a lot better. Uh, in myself um but uh, yes we should we, we will be okay so tonight's topic is spontaneous combustion um i know joe i've just watched it that's why i've come on at this time because i needed to watch it was quite good actually it was quite good um so uh yeah it's uh gonna be an intro i only wanted to watch it because uh, uh uh it's in wales isn't it hey mohammed how are you my love like evening jules uh they all seem nice in camp they do don't they at the minute um but we'll see time changes we get to uh see the ones that are really bad um and the ones that are more evening joyce they'll call you a lot late up at this time of night uh hey adam Today I did watch. I did watch it, Adam. Um, but yeah, uh, I've enjoyed it. Enjoyed it. Um, so oh, I'm right glad you've all joined us tonight. I didn't think we'd get a lot on or many on because I thought I thought we'd only have about three or four on because I thought, well, it's it's late, isn't it? But for all those night owls or for those that it's only the afternoon or morning too, it's not too bad. So come on. Spontaneous combustion. What do you guys think of spontaneous combustion? Do you believe it's possible? Do you think that there is other explanations? Poor Danny, that would be my worst. <laughs> yes. Hey, Lays, hope you're well, my love life. Uh, no worries, Mohammed. Don't I totally understand my love life. It is a Sunday night and a school night tomorrow. Um, you watched it live. That's good, Adam. Um, I know eating challenge. I'd love to do it though. I'd love to do the eating challenge. I think that would be uh, amazing um, to do. I've, I once ordered at Christmas or the couple of years back the dried, um, some of the dried uh, animals, not animals, are they? What were they? Bugs. Dried bugs. Um, I ordered some of them for Christmas and we actually did as a little bug challenge. I thought they were quite nice to me. They just, even Deanna, hey, Tracy. Um, it to me, they just tasted like peanuts, but obviously, John and Michael, when it didn't, they they're like, no, 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 no. So, com spontaneous combustions for several centuries. <laughs> oh, that's just dirty, dirty. <laughs> it's good fun telling you. Um, for several centuries, people have debated whether human beings can spontaneously combust or burst into flames. Spontaneous combustion by a type of combustion occurs by self-heating. Temperature is that what it is? Well, that's what they think it is. Um, Tracy's stalking Mohammed. <laughs> Evening, Claire. Hope everything's going well, my lovely. Um, or burst into flames without being ignited by an external source. Through the, though, oh God, my teeth, I apologise. Though the first known accounts of spontaneous human combustion, SHC, date all the way back to 1641. Hey, Laura, oi, oi, Nanny Lane. Date back to 1641. The phenomenon gained wider exposure in the 19th century after popular author Charles Dickens used it to kill off one of the characters in his novel Bleak House. 
When critics accuse Dickens of legitimizing something that didn't exist, he pointed to research showing 30 historical cases. More recently, cases of SHC have been suspected when police and fire department officials have found burned corpses with unscathed furniture around them. For instance, an Irish coroner ruled that spontaneous combustion caused the 2010 death of 76-year-old Michael Farrater, whose badly burned body was discovered near a fireplace in a room with virtually no fire damage. Because the human body is composed mostly of water and it own, its only highly flammable properties are fat tissues and methane gas. I'm surprised I aren't set on fire. <laughs> and methane gas. The possibility of SHC being an actual phenomenon seems remote. Many scientists dismiss the theory, arguing that they that an undetected flame source, such as a match or cigarette, is the real culprit in suspected cases. Typically, deceased victims are found close to the fire source, and ev evidence suggests that many of them accidentally set themselves on fire while smoking or trying to light a flame. On the other hand, believers point to the fact that human's body, human body has to reach a temperature of roughly 3,000 degrees in order to be reduced to ashes. Unless SHC was a genuine factor, it seems impossible that furniture would not burn as well. Proposed cases of the supposed phenomenon include bacteria, static electricity, obesity, stress, and most consistently excessive consumption of alcohol, but none have been sustained by science so far. One reason no, one recent thought comes from British biologist Brian J. Ford, who in August 2012 described his experiment with combustion in a magazine's new in the magazine New Scientist. According to Ford, a buildup of acetone in the body, which can result from alcoholism, diabetes, or a special kind of diet, can lead to spontaneous combustions. So, I've got a few cases to read. Um, don't like a match if you've just sprayed your hair. It does go up, it does go woof. Hey, Mr. Mason, hope you're well. Hope everybody's well. Yolanda, good evening. Cass, good evening. Uh, where? Why are you on this topic? You should... Why are you on this topic? You should... Leave this alone. Don't get... You have to... I'm having difficulty understanding, Diane. Um, uh, Joe, Mike, you're just... Or if you've just let off a burp, a bitty burp. A bitty burp, you dirty yakker. A bitty burp. So, 10 cases of spontaneous combustion. So, we'll go through them and we'll talk after each one and then we can all have a little say on what we think. So, the first case, oh, it's well, it says, some people say that spontaneous human combustion is just a regular fire that people can't be bothered to find the cause for. That could have been avoided through basic fire safety. Others say it's just a particular shift of our internal chemistry that can happen to anyone at any time. So the cases we're going to look at. Evening, Debbie. Uh, evening to everybody coming in that I've not said hello to. So the latest case made headlines as the first Irish case of spontaneous human combustion. People found the bird, burned body of an elderly man laying with his head near the furnace of his apartment. With the head near the furnace, furnace of his apartment, coroners determined though that the furnace was not the source of the conflagration. Nor were there any accelerants on the body. Nor was there any evidence of foul play. This was this case was typical of spontaneous human combustion is that there were no burn marks on the floor, on the ceiling directly, below and above the body, but no other burn marks anywhere in the room. So what would, I, what, if you were looking into that case, what, how would you, what would your thoughts be if you walked into that apartment 
and you saw um, the elderly gentleman or the gentleman um, laying with his head near the furnace, but there was no scorch marks about. Are you a believer? D do you think? Do you think it's possible, or do you think in that case maybe, maybe what? Maybe, maybe, did he did he have a cigarette on him? Did he lay on his cigarette and it just burned? But wouldn't that then have scorched the places round him, or? It's uh, yeah. Um, even the queen. Hey, Sheila. How many ways? I'm going to read that then, Joe. I thought you were going to say how many ways could you combust? Um, the first case. Normally, when the forensics have checked fires, they can pinpoint the start of the fire. See, that's what gets me, Yolanda. We a lot of these cases that we're going to read, they can't pinpoint the fire other than from the body. Like you say, if it's if, if it's an arson fire or a cigarette fire, um, there's always something that leaves a mark. Um, and what I was reading earlier is, do you know when we cremated, um, obviously as bones don't, don't burn, but what they do afterwards is they put the bones in, they put the, bo they put the bones in, in whatever they do, and they crush the bones, which then makes them go to the dust that they do. So, um, to me, it's like, I don't know, when you spontaneously the combust, are the bones gone? Is everything ash? Um, but, yeah, it's, it's really, it, it really gets me these. The latest case, Oh, no, I've done, done that one. The first case, I think the furnace might have something to do with it. But, should, but if the fur, there was nothing in the furnace, uh, as what, what I'm reading on this paper, there was nothing there and there was no burn marks coming from the furnace or actually around the body. There was none below the ceiling or above the ceiling of where the man um, burst into flames. Uh, the fire from cremation doesn't reduce burn to ash. Um, but I think it does from con spontaneous combustion. So that's that's where I think there's a there's a thing. It's like the doctor sleep people. Not sure they just turn into ashes, don't they? I don't know. I don't know. I believe in SC. I I think I do, Laura. I think that it's too. Um, there's too many cases happening. Uh, John, I believe in it, Lindsay. I don't think it actually goes up in flames, more smoldering. Well, there's one story in here, um, and it actually says that there was a witness to somebody that uh, spontaneously combusted. That's an interesting one when I come to that one. So the first case, the first mention of spontaneous human combustion in the history books is Polonus Vostitus. <laughs> Excuse me, you know I'm dyslexic, so I read as it's pronounced. Um, Polonus was just a regular Italian knight in the late 1400s who liked wine, women and song. He consumed two ladies of very strong wine one night and it disagreed with him. People say that he immediately vomited flame and then burst into flames entirely. No one else seemed to have a problem with the wine and people were baffled as to how this happened. They're still baffled now. So let's look at this one then. So this one, they've got, they've had a lot of wine, a lot of alcohol, let's say. So we know alcohol can be flammable. So could on this occasion, for this one, the first case, could his breath have been that potent that he's gone to light a cigarette? Or is, 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 is I don't know, gone past the candle, is belched? And the flames caught, and that's why the flame was seen coming out of his mouth. But obviously the alcohol's gone down, so the trail gone down. Can it do that? Is that something that could be done? Um, did they have a pacemaker? I don't know. Or well, like Winifred, Mary and Sarah. When the morning sun rises, I believe in it too. It used to scare me so much when I was a child. I still remember seeing a picture where there's only, yes. Exactly. The lady in the chair, weren't it? Um, she was sat in the chair and all the rest of her body were fine. Um, and it was just a leg and everything had um, 
but uh, all well, a leg had gone to ash, only half of a leg. But again, I think the bones had gone, so the temperatures got to have been hotter than a furnace. Do you know? She, she no, she wasn't Joe. Um, stomach acid. Maybe, maybe stomach, maybe the acid didn't, like I say, the potency of the alcohol in that one case, maybe it could be explained in that one, but nobody else had a problem with it. And there would have been more people that drank probably more wine than this gentleman. So, yeah. Number eight, the gruesome details. Spontaneous human combustion has claimed the life of at least one member of nobility. Countess Cornelia de Bande. The Countess, who lived in the 1700s, was found halfway between her bed and her window one morning with everything except her lower legs and three fingers burned. She had apparently calmly risen from her bed to open the window in the middle of the night, but combusted before she could reach the window. In the room, two candles had been burned, or at least the tallow had been burned. The wicks were left completely unburned. Soot covered the room, including some bread on a plate that she had left on a table, just as an indication of how strange the 1700s were. The bread was taken from the plate and offered to the dog. The dog refused to eat it, making it most sensible player in that axe incident. Um, so what's his thoughts on that one then? I'm missing a piece of paper. I've lost a piece of paper. I've only got up to four. That's not good. I'll have to find me other bit of paper with last three on. Um, so, yeah, in that case, then, what do we think? So this countess, we're walking in middle at night. She's gone to open a window. Um, and everything except her lower leg and three fingers burned. So a lower leg didn't burn. Yeah, everything except her lower legs. Wow. So, but again, with this one, what gets me is this soot. This, it, it, it's saying two candles had been burned or at least the tallow had been burned. The wicks were left completely unburned. So that means the candle wax would have melted. Uh, hey, Candy. Um, I know. Um, but the candy that that means must mean then that the candle wax had melted for there to be soot round the room. Is that an indication that back then, maybe again with this one, there was something a little bit more um, to what went off? They did use candles. Welcome to our ETA family, my lovely. Um, could there have been candles used? I mean, obviously there were candles around, but could, I don't know, maybe a, a night you've caught on fire from the top as she's laid on the floor. She's, that and, and that's caused the so Who knows? Um, that's why the dog refused. Possibly so. Um, it's not that these examples always show an abrupt ending of the burned body. I know. Um Obviously, if John hadn't gone to bed, I'd have gone upstairs and done this on big laptop because then I know it would probably be more graphic, but we could have put the images up um, as well. Um, so, uh, yeah. Uh, the next one, I really need John to come downstairs because I can't find the fourth, the, the fourth one. So, number seven, two disappearances. Why do these names have to be so hard for me to read? Jeanette Kazmakaz, Kazmakat, Kazmiakat, Kaz, I don't know, lived with her husband and son in France in the 1970s. When her husband disappeared mysteriously, Jeanette contacted the authorities to try and find them. When her husband disappeared mysteriously, Jeanette contacted the authorities to try to find them. They couldn't find anything. A few days later, while her son was out with some friends and a neighbour, A neighbour found Jeanette's body, except for her legs, reduced to ash in an other in an otherwise undisturbed apartment. I'm going to read that again. Jeanette 
Kazmierak lived with her husband and son in France in the 1970s when her husband disappeared mysteriously. So he's disappeared. Jeanette contacted the authorities to try and find him. They couldn't find anything. A few days later, while her son was out with friends and a, a neighbour found Jeanette's body, except for her legs reduced to ash in an otherwise undisturbed apartment. So a lot of these spontaneous combustions so far has been more upper body uh, because, again, this, this one, the lady's legs was... There were only ladies' legs that were that, that that were left, but everything had been reduced to ash. So again, the temperatures got to have been so high. I mean, what can somebody Google um, temperature of uh, a cremation and temperature that your body needs to be? Because I know there's it, there's a massive massive difference um, in it. Um, but yeah, hey, Nanny Lynn on you YouTube. Um, but for me again, see, so for again, this one, you've got that twist coming into it. The husband disappeared mysteriously. Did he come back and set fire to her? Which I think what would have been, um, I mean, it's in 1970s. Could this be, could there be gangsters uh, between 1,000 to, is that for cremation? that one joe um but could this could this be 1970s so let's say 1970s we're looking that there would have been more gang gang welfares going off um not sure in france though i know for uk probably would be i think france would have been same though wouldn't it not very good on my history am i um but did the husband go missing? Did they come uh, to reduce bone to ash? You need 3,000. Wow. So that's hot. That's hot. I don't even, crematoriums aren't that hot. Um, the phenomenon gained wider exposure than when Charles Dickens did Claire. Uh, evening dawn, a crimson, crimson, a crimson. Has to be red hot to burn the bones. See, that's it. And uh, uh, in the the crematoriums actually use what's called bone crushers um, because the our furnaces aren't that high to burn to burn the bones. So the bones are always left, but they get crushed up afterwards after the cremation. Um, the bones get crushed up and mixed in with the ashes. Um, so we know that these people that are burning that are spontaneously combusting, if their bones have gone, cremation is 1,000 and 1,300. Hey, Craig. Um, yeah, I thought, and, and I knew it were quite a bit lower than um, what the body needed. Um, so, yeah, so to get, you just can't imagine, I couldn't imagine walking in and or actually seeing somebody combust with my own eyes. I think it's just... But it gets to me. I think what what for, for me gets me is the fact that the bones have gone. There is there's nothing. You just after the combustion, it's just a pile of ashes. Um, which once you know that bit about the cremation side of it, it's sort of like you sit there thinking, um, what's happening? Hey, Sky. Uh, but no, 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 rises above. <laughs> The reaction oxygen. I watch videos about what they do at a cremation on YouTube. I know it's sad, but I find it interesting. I do, Jules. I do. Mike's a, my lad, he's turned around the other day and he said he won't mind working in a mortuary. And I was like, mm, really? Um, again, I think it's a heartbreaking job, but I also think it's a fascinating and interesting job. Um, but it is a job that needs to be done with so much respect and it's got to be the right people for me that are in that because obviously you're dealing with you you're dealing with the a bigger thing than just the uh cremation. So number six, the fire inside. In nineteen sixty seven, a passenger on a bus in England noticed blue flames in the window of an apartment building hallway. She thought it was a gas jet and called the fire brigade. When they got to the place, they supposedly found the body of Robert Francis Bailey, a homeless man. 
A fireman reported seeing a slit in the man's abdomen from which blue flames were issuing. Can anybody find any more on um, this one? Uh, Robert Francis Bailey, see if there's any more history on uh, online uh, while we look into this one then. So he had a slit. The fireman reported seeing a slit in the man's abdomen from which blue flames were issuing. So, again, what could be happening in this one then? Uh, it's 1967, um, and it was a blue flame that were reported. Um, so again, what burns a blue? What what can we? What could we burn that would cause a blue flame? Uh, another difference was the build of acetone in the body, which can result. Yeah, I got that one, Claire. Yeah, definitely. Um, I was looking to go to Royal. Hospital mortuary with my old job. I was late due to a call and missed a postmortem, but I found that so interesting and the bodies and what they do. Yeah, totally get your jewels, totally. Um, so, yeah, I mean, what could cause a blue? I know alcohol causes blue flames. Hey, Charles, that's okay. Um, I know alcohol, I'm sure when you burn alcohol, it burns a blue flame or certain alcohols burn a blue flame. I can't remember, might not. Yeah, it is a blue flame. I can remember having cocktails with flame on top with alcohol. So alcohol does cause um, a blue flame. So with this one then, um, could it be right? Could it be, but the slit in the man's abdomen. So could he have fallen and, I don't know, cut his stomach? Could that have caused uh, methane from the gut, as uh, Deanna's just put? Joe's put, Robert Francis Bailey. Robert Francis Bale, a homeless man, was outside inside an abandoned home at 49 Auckland Street, Lambeth, South London. At 15.21 a.m. on the 13th of September in 1967, uh, we've said that bit, while waiting for their bus to it, they noticed flickering blue flames visible through an upper window. Presumed burning gas when the fire went around. They discovered it wasn't, yeah. That would be an incredible thought that an internal combustion would cause a slit in the stomach. I wonder if he stabbed himself through a gaseous stomach ache. Do you know uh, gas molecules turn a flame blue? Methane gas, uh, brandy has blue flame. I thought there were some, yeah. Evening, Andrew. That's okay. I've got to get up in a minute and have a look. I've dropped a piece of paper, I think. Um, so, yeah, so I wonder, yeah, Yolanda, that's a good point. Um, I wonder whether he had been stabbed and maybe that's the stabbing. Did it hit a gas line in his stomach? Uh, gases from the intestine, could he have been stabbed? And the gases, I mean, he's, he, he, we're talking about an homeless man. Um, 1967. Um People would have been treated fairly badly, I think, if they would have been homeless um, and on street. I mean, they're still treated badly today, but at least a lot more people are helping them. Um, could somebody have stabbed him and robbed him? You know, um, maybe an maybe another homeless person um, could have stabbed him, robbed him for what bits he'd got, which caused then the gases to come out of the stomach, which then sparked the com combustion. Who knows? Um, number five. When spontaneous combustions win combustion won a court case. He didn't smoke, but he drank degenerated alcohol. It has no beverage property to it. It often used to ignite fires while camping and to remove stains from clothes and upholstery. Wow. Happens with animals too when they get hit for a car. For example, the gases blow the stomach up. Wow, we'll have to look into pet one. I've not I ain't got anyone for animals. Um, so, yeah, when spontaneous combustion won a court case. Nicole Millett, the wife of a Parisian innkeeper in 1725, was found after her husband roused the entire inn when he smelled smoke. What was left of her was in the kitchen, almost completely reduced to ash, with the wooden utensil, utensils around her unburned. Other accounts have her burned on a straw pallet with the straw only a little damaged. That looked suspicious, and so her husband was tried and found guilty of murder. On appeal, though, he used the spontaneous human combustion defence and was exonerated. Nicola's death, Nicole's death was found to be 
due to a visitation of God. Um, and again, back in 1725, um, if you look at the religious, the religion sides of it, after what I've been through in my past, yeah, I'm a believer in it, um, Charles. I, I, I really do think um, that, that this can happen. Um, I think the I think the circumstances under where there must be so much um, going off within the body to um, to, to to cause it um, a lot of mixture of gases, God knows whatever else. Um, but if the wooden utensils around her were unburned, or on other accounts um, she'd burned on a straw pallet with only little damage done to the straw. If it had been, if somebody had tried to set fire to her, surely everything would have gone up if it was a natural fire. Um, give me a minute. I want to find that other piece of paper because it's got the best story on it. Just keep talking to yourselves a second. Bless it, God. I found it. I don't know if I can get it. If I can get my leg behind my chair, I can get it. I've got it! Before I break my neck. Oh, oh it's good, my head in. Bloody hell. Can't miss that. I've got to find that. <coughs> Goodness me. <coughs> Excuse me. <coughs> God. Uh, what's that link put? It bit into the post on the stairs, which is made of solid mahogany. And his teeth were embedded so deeply into the wood. Wow, what was that? Omitted. Wow, Marie. Uh, I'm out of breath now. Whew, I've only bent down. I think the reason that a person burns, but the surrounding, but not the surroundings, because the flame burns upward. Yeah, but then if it's Burning upwards, wouldn't it char the ceilings? To be pried open. Wow. <coughs> Heard of people drinking hairspray near up, yeah. Unimaginable what he went through. An elder woman was found. Yeah, we've yeah. I think we're gonna come to that one. Um a flame shrinking skull takes America by storm. In St. Petersburg, Florida, a landlady was making her rounds in her apartment building when she noticed one doorknob was incredibly hot. The tenant, Mary Risa, did not respond to her call, so she called for people to open the door. Inside, she found Risa's remains in the middle of a six-foot scorched area of carpet, a chair and an end table in the middle of the scorch mark were upright, indicating there was no activity nearby on the floor. A pile of newspapers were untouched by the flames. The body, on the other hand, was reduced to ash except for a skull and completely undamaged foot, some report, which just may be exaggerated say that the skull was shrunk down to the size of a teacup. I heard that. A hand gel. No, highly inflammable. Wow. So, yeah, so what about this one then? So the doorknob was hot. So the landlady noticed the doorknob was hot. Um, see, this one to me, again, doesn't... They found the skull and they found a foot, an undamaged foot. So the skin must still be on the foot for this one. Um, and they found the skull, but 
Uh, that m might have been exaggerated because I can't see a skull shrinking. If it was shrunk down to a teacup, then obviously it's been planted, hasn't it? Um, but for me, what gets me with that one is she noticed the door handle was hot. So if we're talking about spontaneous combustion and it is what it says, that nothing else is affected, why was the doorknob affected? Why was the doorknob, doorknob, why was the doorknob hot? Um, said in your gut that plays a part. I believe it does, Marie. Um, I think, uh, yeah, it can do. Uh, I heard that the hand gel had ethanol in it, highly inflammable, and man lit a cigarette after using it and burnt himself. Uh, that the hand wash, that hand wash, isn't it? Um, we got told after you'd used, uh, you know, the hand gel that we've all been using. If you actually light that, it's an invisible flame, and that you will burn your hands on. So I wonder it. Well, again, no, because that still wouldn't burn to the intent intensity of burning of, of of the breakdown of the bones. It wouldn't burn. The bones would be left. Um, if you what with backdraft, you would not. Oh, I love backdraft. The door handle being hot could be her trying to get out, or it could have been the heat source. Maybe Scott. I maybe maybe that were a trigger. Um, I don't know if it were, could it have been, I don't know, um, maybe some kind of electricity forming through it. Uh, Mary Ellie, it is, I burn a small drop in sink and burn. Yeah. Yeah, it's shocking. But yeah, the door handle could be a trying to, it could have been a trying to get out. Um, but the last case I'll read you, which is number one. Um, to me, tells tells a different story on what happens when we combust. Um, number three, when spontaneous combustion lost a court case. So we've had one that wins. This one's one that lost. Jack Angel, who had been ho hospitalised with severe burns, brought a court case against the manufacturer of his hot water heater, for three million dollars, he said that he went to check the ma malfunctioning heater and it blew and scalded him. However, a doctor noted that his body had burned from the inside out, not the outside in. Shortly afterwards, he changed his story and said he fell asleep only to wake up with terrible burns all over his body and sold his story as a survivor of spontaneous human combustion when he was one of the only people to survive? Was he one of the only people to survive spontaneously combusting? Um, so that's an interesting one. Uh, and that was Jack Angel. So he tried to sue the manufacturers of a hot water heater because he thought that had scalded him because it, it exploded. But when, the hosp when he got to the hospital and the doctors treated him for burns, the burns were coming on the inside out, not outside in. Um, so could it be one that slipped through? Could it be one that survived a spontaneous combusting, uh, combustion? Um, I pity there's no year on that one, though, and it doesn't tell you whether it's UK or out at UK. Um, it's up to, does it really, Scott? And, you know, that's a clear flame. There's no colour to that flame at all. Um, I was watching people doing it, and uh, yeah, it's uh, it's ridiculous. Um, so yeah, it's not it's not just happening to sm not just smokers. Um, so yeah, I mean, I wonder how it feels to be. I wonder how it felt if the if we can find more on Jack Angel. I mean, obviously, he sold his story to to a newspaper. Um, so I wonder if we could read more on him and see if he connects. It's a true story in America. What the one about uh, Jack Angel, uh, Charles? Um, I'd love to be able to read more on him, um, just to see if he could describe the feeling that it that he um got when 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 it were happening. Um, because yeah. And then number two, it says the twilight zone 
could be in an episode of the Twilight Zone. A gentleman in Crown Point, New York, actually seemed to spontaneously combust when he was watching an episode of the Twilight Zone television show. There is no report on which episode of the Twilight Zone it was. Um, his name was Jack Angel, um, Joe. Look at the bottom plate of the stand where the hand gel is that drips. It's rotted away. Wow. Jack Angel, HC on November 12th, 1974. Wow, while in Savannah, Georgia, USA. Wow. That's so. That's one. I, I wonder whether we can find the bigger article then, Scotty, and uh, try and post. Uh, uh, um, I mean, these are just snippets. I wonder whether we can get one where it can give the real, the, the, like the full, the more a more in depth story. Because um, I think that'd be, uh, I think that'd be extremely good. Um, and then number one, this has got to be my favourite. Uh, actually, someone said. It burned and didn't melt, so I tried it. It just went black and smoke. Really, Dawn? We'll have to try that this year if it snows. Um, it's forecasted, and it, for Wednesday. So this is the last case, and this one is a witness case. This one, out of all of them, really um, made me ask, question, ask questions. A uh, solar power plant in California caused one bird to ignite in flight every two minutes. Could something from the atmosphere cause the phenomenon? Do you know what like it could do? It could be, could it be a mixture of the gases outside and the gases that we've got inside? Could it be, you know, like when you're breathing in, because you, you're breathing in the gases, aren't you? I wonder if there's something that some people on a very rare scale, that when they breathe in, the gases ignite, mix with each other, ignite each other. Um, I have to have a look at that. Can we chat on the Bermuda Triangle, Lindsay, sometimes? We can, Nanny Lynn. Um, and if you want to join us on that chat, um, you'll find some stories for Bermuda. We'll find some stories from Bermuda. And um, come and join us on a chit chat, uh, on a chit night, chit chat, on a chit night, on a chat night, um, we can uh, definitely do uh, Bermuda Triangle. It's another one that fascinates us all, I think. Uh, this is another one, Lynn's Mary Hardy, Florida, a woman whose death was purported to be a case of spontaneous human combustion. See, if you can find, do you know, if you can find uh, more history, uh, Joe, try and post it into members if you can. Um, and um, I can put a file together. So all com contain the combustions, we can get a section in topic section going and then people can add their own findings to it. I think that'd be good. I'm drawn to Titanic. Love Titanic, Marie. Uh, we'll do a night on Titanic as well, I think, because I think Titanic's... Um, look, uh, the Titanic's just... Uh, it's, so histor it's so historical. Send me a link, Joe, because um, I'll not be able to copy it off here. So the last case, there is only one case of human combustion for which there is a witness. A mentally disabled woman lived with her father who cared for her. One day he saw a flash out of the corner of his eye and turned to find her on fire. Despite the flames, she continued to sit quietly in the chair, not reacting and not giving any indication she was in pain. The man's attempts to put the fire out left him with burnt hands. The woman lived through the combustion but slipped into a coma and died shortly afterwards. This indicates one of the strangest parts of human combustion. It takes a very hot flame to reduce human body to ash. Crematoriums have special chambers designed for it. However, in almost all combustions, there's no burns in the room around the body indicating that the person simply stayed in, indicating that the person simply stayed in one place whatever the cause of this combustion it seems to knock people out first now i do you know i think i've got to agree with that i think that if our core temperature goes to a certain um a certain height 
our body would, sh we can pass out anyway, can't we? Um, oh, really, Antoinette? That's a, a, that, you know, that's the right tale to tell. Uh, can't be explained, it's pretty cool. Yeah, love mysteries. Uh, Mary Celeste, yeah, that's another one. We could do Mary Celeste and Titanic together one night. Um, so, yeah, for me, this, this one is somebody witnessed his daughter, but she didn't react to the flames, so she didn't cry out, she didn't scream, she didn't run, she wasn't running round and so anything else. She, she, would, she would just sat there. Um, so I think that's possible because... Could you imagine your core temperature getting that hot? Um, we only need to go into like 40, 41, and we go docile anyway, don't we? Um, as body can shut down, um, we can shut down our body. Kind of exactly, almost like a trans. It could be like a trans, Scotty, obviously. If it, she, she I mean, she, she, I'm not going to say she's lucky because she passed away not long after. She actually went into a coma. But did she feel, did they, did they not feel then the pain of what we, if we put his hand into a fire, we'd feel that pain straight away. If, you, if, you, if you're going into a, con, a spontaneous combustion, does the brain shut the body down first so you don't feel um, any pain? As like Yolanda says, um, oh, they've passed out because how awful to see yourself burning internally. Um, so maybe the brain switches off um, or the brain switches the body down, hence why she went into a coma, because the brain still lives on, doesn't it? Um, but I wonder whether you do feel any pain then, or whether it's uh, ketones, acidosis. They do. They have to keep an eye on that um, for the ketones. Uh, never passed out. Didn't, didn't he really? But who says he didn't pass out though, Nanny Lynn? Who says Bailey didn't pass out? Um, or is that part of report? Zen, hotel, magnetic fields, all spots, interesting stuff. I, I love all like that, um, Laura. I love watching that. Um, but yes, yeah, so I wonder how many of these other people that. I don't know if you can hear little and screaming. The brain shuts down with the shock to the body. It could do, Dawn. I mean, how many times can, I mean, if we, the fireman did, wow. Um, how many times do we do something and hurt ourselves and we can pass out through the shock of it, through, um, but I wonder we spontaneous combustion, do we pass out first before it all starts? Um, do you know, I wonder whether it's, or whether it's just like a split second. I suppose we'd never know unless people can um, have ever, can, can ever survive a con combustion. Um, I don't even know whether people have tried to put other people, whether there's stories out there where, where they've tried to actually put a person, douse them in water to try and stop, stop it going off. Um, very interesting. I would imagine it's quick. I would have thought so, Marie. Going to Sedona in April. Ooh, you have to let us know how you get how it goes on. Uh, is that for an holiday, yet, Charles? Uh, but was he the one who caused the slit in his own stomach? Maybe. Maybe. Um, the only time I passed out when I was pet. Well, that's about me. <laughs> I don't know if I have, I think I have passed out before. Um, but yeah, uh, let me go back up. Film the sky earlier thought was, though, was clearly in pain with how he bit into the post and potentially stabbed himself to try and stop it. Wow. But, see, again, did he try and stab himself? Did he not? Uh, he goes above 13, I said, check my ketones, and if it's high, go to the hospital. I've not checked in years. I seem to have hypos instead of hypers. I wish uh, Jordan, Jordan doesn't she has more lows. Is it hyper, hypers? She has. She has the, well, she has a few hypos, but she has the low ones. Um, but that thing now for diabetes is amazing. And they put it on, and it's your phone that just bleeps, whether it's dropping high or low. Um, I think you only get that when you type one. I'm not sure. Uh, posted some personal pictures, uh, Joe. 
Uh, I read that wrong, Nanny Lim. What's Nanny Long? Nanny Lim putting the top. <laughs> I wonder if it starts on the inside and works its way outwards. This lingus should possibly cause a person to pass out. Could it be? Could it be something like heartburn that could trigger it? Like you said, the acid, the acid build up in your stomach with the gases. Um, if it's done over time and it's built up and built up and built up and not being treated, um, could that, do you know, it just opens it up to like mountains of possibilities, doesn't it? It really, it's just, but for, to me, these stories fascinate me. Um, I'm really fascinated in the, but you know, in the paranormal, because to me, spontaneous human combustion, uh, SHC, um, for me, is part of the paranormal because it's unexplained. Um, paranormal doesn't have to mean um, ghost hunting um, or... Um, based on um demons and devils and um and, and, and stuff like that. For me, um the paranormal is such is more it's it's such a wider um a wide a wider playing field that you can go to and you can find some amazing stuff um and talk about it and discuss it because it's sort of like again we can never prove it but we can never disprove it. Uh, Peter's dangerous at staying right. My own theory um, he had a dreadful stomach pain, bloating with gas. He bit into the staircase as he stabbed his tummy, hoping, hoping to release the gas. Very good be, Scotty was quite important, isn't it? I just read without was. Um, I'm always full of wind and stomach acid. I think I need to stop lighting my cigarettes. Claire, quit smoking. Um, but yeah, it's um, just makes you wonder, doesn't it, on on what can trigger it? I didn't know they were on the NHS. I'm type two. They want me to be type one with injections, but I refused to see my brother go through what he did. I've now got it under control. See, Jordan's type two. Uh, she 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 got diagnosed with type two when she were twenty two. I think she would have been uh, around twenty two when she got diagnosed type one. But I know in t type one, type two diabetes is nothing like type one um, because type one the pancreas stops working, so you don't produce any insulin at all. Whereas though type two, you can overproduce. But I don't know whether type two can turn into type one in end. I'm not sure. I don't think it can, but I could be wrong. I don't. I'm not up on that. Um, but you know, many people will quit smoking if they proved SHC was caused by smoking. Do you know what, Scott? I don't know whether they would. I don't know whether people would even. It, it, it might affect the um. The Whittlers and the Warriors, I think they'd possibly be like, mm, not doing that. But I think other people would be like, oh, I'm not bothered. You only live once. If I'm if I'm, if, if I'm going to go that way, at least I'm not going to be in any pain. Uh, do you know what I mean? It, it, it's, it's really, really, the paranormal is so intense that most people can't handle the truth of it. Very much agree, Charles. Very much agree. And I also think that it's very, I think in a lot of ways, it allows people to disrespect other people's views because we all have our own views and opinions. Like half of us on the art world are believers that there is such a thing as spontaneous combustion. There's going to be half of us on here that don't. And I think that, that how we conduct ourselves on here, whether you believe or don't believe, we don't mock and we don't... Um, We don't disrespect anybody just because our beliefs are different, um, which I think is absolutely amazing. And that's just like hats off to you guys in chat. Um, but, yeah, I think it's, it's just one of them subjects where I think you, you've just got to tread carefully, haven't you? Because you don't want to – you never want to impose your views onto somebody else. But, uh, yeah. Um, on December 5th, 1966, the body of 62-year-old Dr. J. 
Irving Bentlight was discovered in his Pennsylvania home by a meter reader. Wow. Actually, only part of Dr. Bentley's leg and foot were found. The rest of his body had been burned to ashes in a bathroom. See, I can't get that in my head, Nanny Lynn. How can part body burn, but then his leg and his foot be left? Um, part of the good doctor's incinerated robe lay at the site, and his walk was left propped against the blackened bathtub. But how can just his leg and what else were it? I'll go back up. Foot, a leg and a foot were found. Um, while half a limb remains, it's just it, 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 it's just really um, baffling that 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 could that, that it could happen. Um, Jenny Safran is an unusual case. Somebody actually witnessed her combustion. In that one, um, Joe, did she pass out? Was she? running around um, in pain, or did she just just stand and just whew, go up? Uh, but the most eye-catching clue was a massive hole in his vinyl floor, measuring two feet, six metres wide, by four feet, one and a half metres long. So what would massive hole? Look, blood, I think, is... Blood, I think, is... Do you think it's in the, in the DNA, Diana? Uh, Jenny Saffron is an unusual case. One actually was a combustion. Jenny was 61 years old when she died, but had the mental class of a six year old, according to her father. Yeah, that's the one I've just read. Uh, she was on fire, but just that's the, yeah, that's the one I've just read. She's the, um, the only, that's the only witness case um, where she passed, she went into a coma. That's the last one I've just read that. Uh, Joe, I'm glad we've got a name for it because it doesn't give the name on uh, she that and the human fat. Yeah. Uh, limited makes sense if both legs weren't fire goes up the human skin doesn't conduct flames like cotton wood for example so it'd indicate flames starting in the stomach but then what about the other leg exactly so did it only go down one side um, did it only burn so far down one side at leg did it it's, um, God, it's so weird I can't say anything so Nothing else burns or melts around them as the heat must be so intense to burn a body to tissue bones. So that's it. I mean, the intensity of that heat. I mean, I know that if I put me at me hand near a candle flame, the intensity of that heat is is, is a strong heat, you know? Um and uh, yeah, you can go like that through a flame, but you can you you can feel it, you can smell the burning of the skin, the hair, uh, everything. So uh, yeah. Body fat is a fuel. Yeah, it definitely is. Definitely is. Body fat is definitely a, a, a fuel to it. Or did it somehow start at the foot and work up the leg, then up the body? Could be. It could be. But then what would trigger? I mean, for the stomach, we can say it's stomach acid that triggers it. Or if, Di if Diana's right in what she's saying, it's something in the blood. So maybe um, it's something that goes, so it triggers down, so it might start at the kneecap, let's say, and then just go all the way up and then all the way down the other side, leaving that bottom part finger. I mean, there's so many factors, isn't there? There's so many different things that um, it could, it could be. I feel, but what causes the ignition? Again, it could be, like we said earlier, it could be the oxygen and the um, things in the... Um, in the air, uh, I'm falling asleep on sofa, trying to hang on, but eyes go, look at you, you're, you're, you're in your own house now, and you're a lightweight. <laughs> in hotel or here, you'd have been up till God knows what time. You're in your own house, you're now comfortable, and now you're bloody going to bed and leaving us. Only messing. Sweet dreams, buttes, and have a uh, good night. Um, the Danish atomist Thomas Bartholin had been credited with Penning the first written account of spontaneous human combustion in 1663. Wow, we'll have to get some of that history posted. Um, it's described how a woman in Paris went up in ashes and smoke while she was sleeping. Wow. Blood pools in the feet. Good point, Diana. It definitely does. 
to a pearly Lindsay catch you late. No worries, Antoinette, my sweet lady. Uh, my sweet dreams to you and your yo. Uh, makes you wonder like things from static from clothes could ignite it. Could be, Jules. That's another thing you don't think of, do you? The static that we get when we sit down, um, whether we're sitting on a couch. Would fabrics have been um, more, more prone to be static, eh? Um, going back, but then that doesn't explain the cases that have come forward. Um, were, it, were it 2010, the last known case? Was that the last, was that the last case? Oh, you didn't tell me, do you? I just said the latest case. It was the uh, first Irish case. Um, but you don't give me a year that it was. Um, then you'd have an environment factors too to add to the rest you would. Um, but for me, it's just, like I said, it's just so fascinating. It just opens up your mind to all different possibilities. Um, again, we will del delve more further. 2010, I thought it were. Um, so there's been nothing since 2010. So is it something that the government put out? Conspiracy theories coming in. Um, but could it be um, something that the government put out in the air or that, they're, that they, they've released some different gases? Um, a fire needs oxygen, heat and fuel. I'm burning oxygen. <laughs> oh, dear. Ban oxygen. Don't breathe. <laughs> keep your oxygen don't need it um but yeah it's like it's so um you need oxygen <laughs> claire done <laughs> but i wonder whether it could, it could be something that's released could it be i don't know could it be a certain type of medication that we take could it be a piece of food that we eat that just has a, a, a static charge to it as it's going down? Uh, he's in bed, Nanny Lane. He's gone to bed. Him. He's still not 100%. Um, obviously, he's done a COVID test and he's come back negative. I think uh, Jordan and uh, Dan are uh, doing a COVID test to make sure um, they're all right. Dan's just started We eat now. Um, John's still really poorly. We're still uh, getting breathless and... Um, he just feels so poorly in himself. Um, but then we didn't directly come into contact with anybody with COVID and we've done his 10 days isolation anyway. Um, but um, you, you, you've got to have passed people on street or uh, been stood near them that have been positive and they could have coughed, you could have picked anything up. So if it were COVID that we've had and obviously the results have come back negative, um, maybe we'd gone, done it, we'd add it and then gone over his 10 day period, who knows? Um, but for me, I just think it were a cold and a flu. Um, but John's got it bad, Jordan's really bad, and Dan's just starting with it now. So uh, Joe and Dan's going to do a different test and uh, see what happens with them. But, uh, yeah, he's having more blood work done on uh, Wednesday, though, Nanny Lynn, so uh, we'll keep you updated. Um, but we think it's scarring on his lungs, um, and I forgot the name of uh, what it is um, because there's so many factors that's fitting in uh, to that one. So, But, yeah. Um, there's a lot, but there's a lot really poorly um, with it. And obviously we all went to wedding and everybody at Joe's wedding were, had all got this that everybody had got. So uh, it was like a room of germs. <laughs> <laughs> but uh, yeah, everybody's okay. Um, just plodding on. Uh, Dawn Meanly, there was a case where a woman combusted that was wearing a fire retardant clothing. The fireman even tried igniting her clothes and to no avail. Wow. Make sure you share that one, uh, Claire. Uh, Nanny Lynn, if you've got any to share, if anybody's got anything to share, pop into members and share it. And I'm going to create a group called Con Con Spontaneous Combustion so we can go back and we can read and uh, try and keep adding more to it. So we, we build the file and uh, get different cases. And maybe we could pick another another case out. 
Uh, that's the only problem now. We forget about colds, flus, and viruses. We all think the, uh, that's it. Everybody thinks it's the city. Everybody thinks it's COVID, and uh, unfortunately, you've got to look at it that we've we've all been in a lockdown. We've not mixed, and now we're all mixing. The common cold now feels worse than what the COVID did for some people, um, because it's like knocking you all for six. Um, that's why they changed way of making clothes. Wow, Dawn. I never knew that. Uh, they could just as well not be feeling well, but it was negative. Yeah, I don't think it is. Um, I, I mean, I don't really, personally, I don't think it is. Um, I think it is just the normal, normal common cold, but it's like the flu's coming back. We're getting the normal flu coming in now. Um, lockdown weakens our immune system. It does, Scott. Uh, and I was reading something the other day that uh, they're thinking about putting us back into lockdown for Christmas, um, which I think is absolutely like, bloody stupid. I, for one, will not be going back into lockdown. I'm not having my jabs and then being told I've got to go into lockdown. Um, so, uh, yeah, uh, I hope it doesn't come to that because uh, well, I'm not going back into another lockdown. I think it's bloody ridiculous. Um, we should all have us, uh, should, should, crackers now to do that to us, to, um, yeah, um, to jet in just like this COVID, etc. Yes, uh, I've got COPD, Linda, every time I have a coughing fit. Do you know it drives you crazy though, Debbie, doesn't it? Because when you're going out, you're getting looked at as though you're a leper and you see people backing away from you because you're coughing. And you just you just want to I, I just turn around and go you've just got to you know you've just got to say make a joke of it more than anything um, and just look at people and say bloody hell you don't cough or fart these days do you know what I mean because people do make you feel like you shouldn't be out um, we were out today and the cold weather got on Joe's chest it got on my chest we were all coughing a little bit. Um, and everybody's like, you can see them all looking and you've got a few people wearing masks and they're giving you dirty looks because you're not wearing a mask. And you're like, we're not coughing, we're coughing into his coats. Um, and it's like, do me, do me head in. It's like smokers and non-smokers. <laughs> um, but I understand it. It, it, it. it is what it is. Looking forward to the snow that we're supposed to be having end of the week. I think it's Wednesday. It's supposed to be coming in, isn't it, Jules? Wednesday, Thursday. Um, so, uh, yeah, I hope we do get a bit of white fluff. A bit of white fluff. Um, that would be good. Doctor's receptionist was the worst. She had me in tears. Are oh, you joking, Debbie? Take no shit from receptionists. Um, I know they're there to do a job. And uh, do you know what? Hats off to them. They've got a difficult job when people are phoning, but some some of them, and this is the 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 not the majority, the minor. There is a few that are really rude. Um, we've got one at ours, and uh, when when she answers the phone because I recognise the voice, I have to speak to somebody else. I refuse to speak to her, and uh, she has to put a manager on um, or another to left another receptionist that's there because I won't speak to her at all, because they're actually spoke to us on the phone. Um, but they can have you in tears. Um, but don't take it. Don't don't take it. They're not there to get you in tears. They're there, there to help you. And if they, they're in the wrong job, if they're being... If, they, if, if, if a receptionist makes somebody go into tears or anybody in a certain profession, if they bring you to tears, they're in the wrong job. Um so please don't let it um, put you up. Can't have vaccines because of blood and being treated like I'm dead. It's wrong, Dawn. It's totally wrong. And you're not. There's medical reasons why you can't have it. There's medical reasons why there's thousands of people out there that can't have it. And you're being penalised for it. And it's wrong. Because you're not. You're a very clean lady, Dawn. You're very clean. You keep coughing and just ignore ig ignore the ignorance um that's the best thing you can do don is just ignore the ignorance but if, if it's upset you that much i would report the receptionist um I'd, i wouldn't take no shit i really wouldn't um i'd report i'd report it i'd go to the uh manager and if i got no joy from the uh manager of the uh surgery i would go above that um because um it's wrong that you're made to feel bad just because um, you can't have your um, injections. 
Um, I wear a mask because I work in the park. Yep. I mean, one good thing though, when you're outside, Charles. I mean, you've got you've got a lot of air around you. But if there's more people coming into the park, and again, I don't know how rife it is where you are, Charles. I mean, over here at the minute, we've got a little bit of a lull, I think. Or, but I've not been. I don't follow it anymore. I've I've sort of like stopped following this COVID because it just got me into a panic where I didn't want to leave house. Um, so, uh, yes, yeah, so I, I've sort of like stopped reading up about it. Um, I do know that it is rife in a lot of places, though, and they're saying now that there's a, um, another strain of it coming out, a, a higher strain. Um, but this higher strain, apparently, um, the injections we've had aren't for that strain anyway. So, it, it, you know, it, the thing with flu and cold is it's very hard to treat anyway. Um, they can try and give us as much vitamins and 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 and, and stuff as they can, but um, it's difficult because it's a virus, and a virus you've got. It's not what did Jordan say? It were now. If it's bacterial, it can be treated. If it's viral, there's no treatment. You know, it's just got to span its time. Now we've we've done all the hiding and the hibernating and everything else and now we just need to start building his immune systems back up um told my doctor off once he was very rude yeah i've reported one of our doctors um for what what, what for how we were with jordan um i've always carried it in my handbag even busting next i got a thing about touching handles and I, i'm same jules always got it my bag's inside me and i've always got a little bottle uh full of hand sanitizer i don't care uh, I turn TV off, don't read papers because it's too much fear around it. Definitely, Dawn. It definitely is. I've already called it. We're going to need yearly vaccines, the same as the flu ones are. And again, not everybody needs to have a flu jab. It's only those that um, have got a weaker immune system. And even then, some of them don't can't have it due to the illnesses that they've got. Do you know, and it's just to me, it's just it's just crazy. Um, but it is, it's going to be flu's been around for years and years and years. Um, and like you say, COVID is another, um, a, a, another form of flu, uh, more contagious or more, um, damaging to his lungs, to, to, to his breathing and stuff. But, um, yeah, it, it, it just needs to be put to a stop now. Uh, clean restrooms and cab yeah you have to be Charles my lovely make sure you're um that's that that's uh, that's off to you my lovely um we need to live yeah it will uh Christmas has its traditions turkey stuffing crackers mince pies lockdown <laughs> is that going to be a new tradition every Christmas let's go in lockdown I think a lot of people might like that you know um for you, you have to have, they're bringing a daily pill out for you to, to connect. They can nick us. I ain't even, I mean, to be honest, we've been badly anyway, but we've had the cut, we've had both jabs, and I don't see that why we need to go back and have, um, have the uh, boosters. I, I don't understand the boosters. Um, to me, that's not what, that's not what was said. Um, and at some point, at some point, something's going to happen um, because they're either pushing everybody now and people are losing the jobs. There's gonna, it's going to have to go to, what is it, the high court or whatever it is, um, because it is going against um, people's rights. Uh, we've got a right. We, we don't have to, we can't be forced into doing something. And at the minute, people think that they, they are being bullied and forced into having it or they lose the jobs or they can't go to college or they can't do this. They can't fly to the family in a different country. And it's totally wrong. It's against human, it's against your human rights. Um, so something's going to kick off big time uh, about it all. So uh, I'll, I'll be ready and waiting for when that happens. Um, you should have the same ones as the first two, but they're not getting it same as first two, are they? It's a complete, everybody's having the same now. Um, there's no um, the vaccine now. Uh, don't you get the same vaccine or different one? Um, this the the boosters now, Claire, that you're getting. Everybody's having the same booster. There's no Jordan had Pfizer. Uh, we had I forgot what I had. 
or did I have Pfizer? I think I had Pfizer. Me and John had Pfizer, um, and and Jordan had that other one. Uh, sweet dreams, Nanny Lane. Um, but uh, yeah, the boosters that's coming up, it's the same booster for everybody, regardless of what jab you've had. The boosters, are, it's nothing to do with that thing. So um, yeah, it's um, it, yeah, I can't remember what it's called, um, but yeah, uh, like the flu jabs you have each year. The same one, exactly like it is. So I have flu jab, so I think I'm covered. Um, well, yeah, it's it's a weird one, isn't it? It's just a strange one. But uh, I so um, just keep positive. Do you know what? Just keep positive. Keep doing what you're doing, um, and just don't let anything get you down, guys. Um, just keep. Just make sure you um, you keep your own sanity. My son's friend died 24 years old, three hours after the jab. See, these cases where people, uh, they're, 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 it's the same with any jab, um, not just COVID jab. It's the same with any immunisation that we do that we do have. We know that there's risks and we know that some people, unfortunately, it's not going to sue. But to me we need to be doing more tests to find out what people are allergic to um especially when we're giving out new medications if you know somebody's uh, allergic to certain kinds of medication they need to be the ones to be to be put forward so things like that don't happen and i'm so sorry that's happened um dawn that's uh, my heart goes out my heart it breaks for everybody that were lost um who, 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 who lost through either the jabs through the through COVID itself? It's just, it's just destroyed. It's just destroyed so much. It's destroyed so. It's destroyed. It, 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 you know, it's destroyed families. It's in. It's destroyed the way that our children are going to be brought up. It's destroyed friendships. Um, it's destroyed relationships because people have never had to live on top of each other like they have done. Um, the, the, this uh, I got a pneumonia job, you know. Yeah, I, I, I should be having that, but uh, I've not had that one yet. No, the wrong way, but last couple of years they have nearly put everything down to COVID, even though exactly, exactly they have Joe. Um, heart attack, oh, 20 foot blessing. My, do you know, the angels needed him, done That's how I have to look at it. If, if, if they take them too young, the angels need them. Um, but, yeah. Night, Andrew, my lovely. Uh, marriages have split over lockdown. They have done. They have because people have never had to add that intensity in the relationships. And if your relationship survived a lockdown, oh, my God, you know, that's off. Um, but, yeah, it's, it's, been, it's been so difficult for so many. And uh, so many don't can't talk about it because they just don't. I don't know. They they don't open up. That's why you should always open up. Never keep anything bottled. And like I said, make sure you ooze that positivity. Out of every negative, take a positive. Um, because there's always a positive to be found if you look hard enough. Um, and even in that moment, it might not be that in that moment you find that positive. Um, just keep searching because there's a positive there. Lockdown, if I was, I would have gone out my mind. I know so many on the road, so many on the road, Joe. And it will be again if they put us into lockdown this Christmas. Um, a lot of a lot of people we talk to and that live around us, um, they like go to, they get where all Olden's go together and have the Christmas lunch together and that. They don't even know if that's happening this year. So it's, uh, yeah. Anyway, guys, I'm going to love you and leave you. Um, I'm going to go and have a cup of tea. Um, I'm not going on members tonight. I was going to, but I didn't realise I'd be on this long. From lockdown, I found out I need a bigger. <laughs> oh, dear. Oh, I think a few did, Dodd. <laughs> we need a smaller one. Uh, the vaccine's called Communotech, Biotech and Pfizer. I've developed it. I've just looked. Cheers, uh, Jules. Yeah. Um, that's it. But yeah, no to lockdown. Um, so 
everybody have a great night. Everybody, Scotty, I hope you get some sleep, my love. Like um, Claire, I hope you get some sleep. I know you and Scott has been busy doing essays and everything else. Um, but yeah, all those that are struggling to get to sleep, I hope you have a good night tonight. Um, we shall see you in the morning. I'm going to go on members in the morning and um, I'm going to pick up on what were I doing in what were I doing in members? Um, were it crime and horror? Were it haunted places I were doing, or with that John? I can't remember, but I'll pick it up. Um, so yeah, Mwah. love you loads, everybody. Take care. Thank you so much for watching and being part of our ETA family. Um, we love you all. I've uh, got three assignments to do at the same time. <gasps> Scotty, you make sure you. Get some rest. Don't you be doing them all night. So sweet dreams. Love across the water to everybody. Um, have a great day, great evening, and uh, see you morning. Mwah. Love you loads, guys. Bye. I can't end live. My nails aren't letting me end live. <laughs>